This is Christopher Bickle with Dangerous Minds. We're talking to Timmy Capello from The Lost Boys film, uh, better known as the uh, Sexy Sax Man. Do you believe in life after death? You know, I can't help it. I can't help it. Do you believe in Santa Claus? I, I, well, I saw him last night. <laughs> Do you believe that the Illuminati is uh, conspiring to form a one-world government? I, I sort of, I think there's a, obviously a, a conspiracy of money and power, but it's been that way since people were around. Sure. Do you believe in a love at first sight? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the first time I saw my wife, yeah. I said, I remember it was 20 years ago, and I just said, why can't I find a girl like that? Do you believe in miracles? I think that they happen all the time in a regular way. Maybe kind of in the way you were explaining earlier, that just being you know, in the right place at the right time. The, the right place at the right time, it's, it's, it's hard, right? I mean, yeah. what do you think about that? I mean, do you think when, when something happens, do you believe in a chance that it's just chance? It's hard to be in the middle of your, uh, uh, you know, of your consciousness and something just so crazy happens. Sure. And I guess it could just be like, well, I've been living these past 3,000 days. I guess it could be <laughs> every once in a while something crazy is going to happen. Like I said, with, with belief in like afterlife and, and stuff like that, it's, it's just so hard to make that leap. Right. It's hard not to think both good and bad things. Do you ever have something like really bad happen to you? Just nail you. Turn your life upside down horrible. And then when you come out of it, you go, damn, I needed that. Do you believe in life after love? <laughs> I don't think so. Do you believe in sex on the first date? <laughs> I, if I was on a date with anybody that, I mean, that's the last damn thing I would ever want to do, is play that you, you horn. Would, you You're in the middle. What, what am I going to play, you know? What, who's, the guy, who's the guy that plays Careless Whispers? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if anything would kill the mood, that would be about it. Do you believe in exfoliating before oiling? <laughs> I Never. It, you know, it's got to be, and, and nine times out of ten, I'd be backstage someplace and I'd be going through the kitchen going, you guys got any olive oil? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so the type of oil didn't, didn't matter as long as it was oily. Is, is that what you're saying? Well, that's the thing. You know, I got my, I got my own line now. That oh, I'm right, selling at the right, convention. On your table. <laughs> Sergio's Saxy Body Oil. Do you believe that workers control the means of production? If they only could. If they only did. No, I believe exactly the opposite. Right? How, you know, the, the the amount of people, the percentage of people that are in unions goes down every yeah, year, absolutely. every five years. And to me, that's probably one of the biggest problems we've got. Workers do not, and that's a real shame. Do you believe that burning jet fuel can melt steel yeah. beams? I, I wouldn't ever pretend to know anything about this. And so sometimes when I really don't know, I've seen loose change, and I've seen in plain sight. Is that something you're interested in? Maybe we can talk about this later. Sure. Because I would, you know, when it comes down to something I don't know, and this sounds really stupid, everybody has their people that they look to and they say, take what that guy knows. With me, it's Chomsky. And he said, it's a really complicated world. Um, and his feeling is that um, a conspiracy of that magnitude would have probably had some leaks. But he seems to be open. But I've heard lots of people at lectures ask him about it, and I'm just kind of bowing to that. So I'm not convinced either way. Do you believe that you would win in a fight against Alice Cooper guitarist, sexy axe man, Kane Roberts. Kane Roberts is a good friend of mine. Oh, really? We yeah, did you guys ever play together? Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. We, we went to New England Conservatory together. We were best friends. Holy, holy crap. Yeah, we okay. were best friends. We were drug buddies. We played in Garland and Jeffrey's band together. And um, Wh Which one of you got buffed first? Me. 
Did he did he follow your suit or do you, you know what? It was, it was just I'm a saying, motherfucker, you follow my suit. <laughs> uh, so could you take him? I have never, and this is just the truth. I have never been in a fight in my life. I've never been hit, and I've never hit anybody in my entire life. So, to me, working out, being strong, having discipline was really about internal stuff. It had nothing to do. And I really, when I was when I was started bodybuilding, bodybuilding was like this kind of freaky, like it was this thing that. Everybody just thought, oh, that's disgusting. That's really gross. You know what I mean? Now it's sort of, you know, it's sort of it's accepted. It's very mainstream. And but at the time, it was it's kind of a stupid thing to do. You know what I mean? Uh, it, 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 people thought you were freaky and stupid. And so, um, you know what? I will I will give Kane the benefit of the doubt and say we started at exactly the same time. Okay. Because we really just called. He lived in Woodstock. I lived in New York. And we hate, he always stayed with me when he was in the city, and we were working on Garland's album. Um, and and we just sort of. I think I remember a call. I said, "Yeah, I'm really into working." And he went, "That's messed up. So am I." And then I always stayed out at his house when I went to L.A. You know, when I was on tour with Tina, I, I, I would stay at his place and Alice would be around when they were doing all that. And we had a band together and we just didn't quite see eye to eye musically. Yeah. Now, we were jazz players. We were really bebop players together. Yeah. And, but, but, but we sort of, I think that I come as close as I can to playing heavy metal sax. You know what I mean? That's sure. what I shoot for. But um, it's really not, it's, it's not that kind of instrument. You know what I mean? It just, unless you put a whole mess of pedals and stuff like that, which I do sometimes, but it's really not, it's just not in it. And so he was going in a very metal direction and nothing about me could go totally there. I, I, I love R&B too much. I love jazz too much. Uh, and I just love a great groove too much. Not, not that metal doesn't have a great groove, often. And I really, really respect the rhythm sections. I, I, sometimes I just can't believe the chops these guys have. Yeah. And so, but I don't hear it well enough, or feel it, or have a background in it well enough to do it justice. Do you believe that I still believe is a better song than Don't Stop Believing. <laughs> you know what? There's two ways to look at music, and one is sort of this sense of aesthetics and groupings of music. I'm sorry. No matter how overplayed it is, no matter how middle of the road and poppy it is, when I, when I hear Steve Perry, I just have to go like, you know what I mean? He, he's phenomenal. He's such a great singer. He has so much Sam Cooke in him. He has so much soul to his voice. He has so much facility. And you're not talking, you're just talking about the the song. But I can't, it's it's like, it. I still believe it's a wonderful song, right? Written by Michael Bean, not by me. And from the from call? The call. Yeah. That's the original version? Yeah. He's an extraordinary songwriter. Now, okay, but I will say this, it's a much deeper song than Don't Stop Believing, right? Yeah. It's a much, in that sense, it's a much, Don't Stop Believing is a beautifully crafted pop hit. I still believe it's too deep, I think, to be a pop hit. It's got a darkness and a depth to it that is, uh, and a groove too. So I was extremely blessed, fortunate, to be able to sing that song. It's, it really is a great song. Isn't it? It's a fantastic song. I mean, that's why you know we're talking about it still today. <laughs> 28 years later. Yeah. Holy shit.